Wow, um, what a way to finish. Deflating for the Blades, who looked like they were just about to pull out a really big result. Carla Sabas alongside me. I guess, when, when does a defeat feel like a defeat when it's not a defeat? You've, you've just lost me with that anyway. <laughs> but, um, well, we've got to be honest, they were the better team for 80%, 90% of the game. Um, we saw our quality come through from very, very few patches. And when it did come through, you know, we carved them up and we had chances. Um, but it looked like it was going to be one of those mm. nights. You need these games. You can't always be the best team. The boys stood up, they tried their hardest, they applied, and they didn't concede and they took the lead. And that, that goal was, it was brilliant. You know, Gibbs White did a great bit of skill to get himself a, a yard and put in a really good cross, but an incredible finish from Billy Sharp. You know, I was going on about their, their striker, Keenan Davis. I thought he was the best player on the pitch for most of the match but he wasn't able to come out with a goal when his team were fully in control. Um, Osborne, when he came on, I thought he was just a breath of fresh air. He did great, but that little bit of skill there from Morgan Gibbs-White and Billy Sharp, that is it's such a, a header, difficult header. You know, he's got one place he can guide that in. He's, under, he's been fouled at the back, but he never lets us down. You know, and that's the sort of time you just think, okay, well, we're gonna, we haven't played our best. We've, we've huffed and puffed. The ref was a bit dodgy and they were a very good team. And you thought, well, we're going to grind this out. Um, of and course, we saved out. the penalty as well. Let's don't forget that. Big Wes had done yet again another massive performance for us and kept us in the game. Um, and I am, I am deflated because it was a hard watch. Yeah. You know, we're used to watching our boys outplay people, um, but credit to the manager. We couldn't control the game. And he thought, well, if you can't control it, I said it at half time, we'll stretch him, give him something out. And he put on the extra striker, took off um, Nord, which is a massive call. You know, he's our orchestra, our conductor. Um, and he wasn't having a great game. And the manager was, was brave enough to say, okay, well, I'm going to take him off. And we did slow things down a bit better with Nord off the pitch. Um, but it was one of those games we haven't lost. Easy to have lost that. You could have lost that 2 3 4 nil mm -hmm. because they were very good and we weren't uh, our, our best. And I, I still think that's a good, it's a good point where we've had matches where we've, we've drawn and I felt it was two points lost. I felt this was a good point and it will give the boys confidence. You know, you've got Osborne coming back, put in a good performance. Jebison got more pit minutes. And what's good for Jebison? He had two half chances. You know, he's on against one of the best teams in the division who were, you know, on top. He's still got two good chances. So there's still positives to take from this. We haven't lost. Big crowd here, we're behind the boys, and we go on. It's a point, of course, as well, that takes the Blades back into the top six for 24 hours at least. You mentioned it was a tough watch, and that's in no small part down to the way Nottingham Forest approached the game. Let's have a look at some of the, the key moments in the second half and Forrest really picked up where they'd left off and this was a, a great chance for, for Steve Cook. Yeah, we, we, we had a few, more. I don't think I've seen as many corners, faced as many corners all season, um, which showed how much, on, how on top of the game they were. Um, but I, I felt our defence was short today uh, and yet again there, someone got a march, I think that was on Egan, uh, which was just unlike us, but you can't play top of your game week in week out week in and this was just one of those games where we weren't at our best but we came up against opposition who were at their best you know so these happen the boys you know they, they'll have confidence they'll be deflated in there but I think the manager will know you know we've done because it could have been a lot worse morale could have been a lot lower if we would have lost this but you take the positive, you've not played your best against one of the better teams and you've not lost. So. Yeah, and, and the reason they'll feel deflated is because they'd got to the fourth minute of stoppage time, one up, and then this happened, a set piece as well. Yeah, well, it's, it's hard. You know, there's a lot of bodies, tired bodies, and as I said, I don't think the communication was at, at the best throughout this match. Um, and there's, a, you know, there's two, there's a free jump there. But it happens, this is football, you know, you can't defend everything perfectly and they, they put in a good cross and it's a good header and that's that, it's, it's a we, goal, well played. We, we also said before the game got underway tonight that we're at the stage of the season now when it's points, not performances, 
that matter. And whilst everybody's feeling a bit deflated because we were one up and so close to getting mm. all three points, it's still another point, and it's still a point that asks everybody else the question this weekend. Yeah, it's, it's a point against a good team, but this is where me and Kev were speaking earlier. I would have played my strongest team against Millwall mm. and ensured three points because you could play your best against Forest and still lose. So this was never a, OK, if we play our strongest team, it's an 80% chance we're going to beat Forest. It was never that. Um, this has been a point gained. But I feel, you know, Saturday was big free lot um, dropped. But we've got a massive match now where I think form and previous matches will go out the window because you've got the added spice of the ex-manager coming back. And it's another battle for, for the playoffs. And that game is, of course, this coming Tuesday night, just four days away. It's Middlesbrough in town with the returning former manager, the self-confessed Blade fan throughout, Chris Wilder, bringing Middlesbrough to town. We're on air on SUTV Live from 7 p.m. Carla Saber and Kevin Gage will be alongside me once again. Kick-off in that one is at 7.45. A late goal then this evening has deprived the Blades of all three points, but they do pick up another point that's enough to take them back into the top six. They'll dust themselves down and go again this Tuesday.